All right, good morning, everybody. We'll get started with some announcements before we officially get started. Uh, Miss Susan, our Vacation Bible School Director, has an announcement to make. We need, we need this for our VBS, you know, because it's uh, cranes this year, but I don't think they'll leave it here, unfortunately. Anyway, next Sunday, um, we're going to have, we're going to eat together. We're going to have a fellowship, but it's only for my VBS workers. So, <laughs> if you want to eat next Sunday, <laughs> you got to work. But anyway, um, we'll meet the Life Center after worship. Uh, we're going to continue to worship for Vacation Bible School, and we'll sign you up if you haven't already signed. I have some people telling me right now where they want to work, which is wonderful, and then I have some people that I've told where they're going to work, so that works out well, too. So we're, we'll be excited to see you there. If you don't think you can work in VBS, you can, I promise you. But if you can't physically work, you can pray. And that, like I told my girls this morning, that is one of the most powerful weapons we have as a Christian, is prayer. And, and I want you to be praying for a successful Vacation Bible School, because I am excited, and I know we're going to have lots of kids, and I know that lives are going to be changed. So please be in prayer for our VBS. This weekend, of course, as we know, is Memorial Day weekend. And it's a weekend as Americans, we remember those who have given their lives for our freedom. And in keeping with that, we're going to say our pledges uh, this morning. And when we stand for the ple pledges, I want to ask you to remain standing for the national anthem. So at this time, would you please post the flags? Please stand. I know many of us have served our country in many various ways, but as a Christian a pastor, I want to again remind the church that our first allegiance is to the Lord Jesus Christ and his kingdom. And any, all other allegiances is underneath him. And that also includes our citizenship. Even though many of us have served our country and, uh, and have loved ones that have given their all, again, we, our allegiance is to Christ first and foremost. And that's what makes us good American citizens. So with that, let's say our pledge to God's word first. Attention. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word, and will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and hide its word in my heart, that I may not sin against God. Now to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag, and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One brotherhood uniting all Christians in service and in love. Now to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose 
And thank you for all those that have have served. I know uh, it's, it's, I enjoy so much uh, living in a strong military community. I remember when I first moved here, going on base and went to, uh, to Starbucks, and there were probably 30 men and women in, in uniform there. I thought that was the, that's the best Starbucks, the, best, the, the safest Starbucks in the world right there. And it just made me proud to live in a strong military community. Our doctrine for today that's uh, there in your bulletin is... Uh, continuing on in that study is the doctrine of war and peace and certainly the Bible speaks of both I, I was just reading this morning my uh, for May 30th my devotion this morning and my my study Bible that I read uh, was a was a time of war when David uh, was commissioned by God to uh, attack the capital city of, of Ammon uh, Rabbath and took it and not just wasn't just war and didn't just take it by force it was a it was a bloody, torturous uh, act of war, and, and, and war can be like that. And it was, and yet it was commissioned by God. We also Revelation 22 says that speaking of Jesus, in righteousness, in righteousness He doth judge and make war. And so there is a, such a thing as a as a righteous war. We see that throughout Scripture. But most of that is above most of our pay grades as far as war and declarations of war. And uh, we're also commanded uh, to on this matter of peace. And that's more within my kind of pay grade and what we're commanded to do. Jesus uh, said, as much as life within you live peaceably amongst all men. That part about in Matthew 5, when he says to love your enemies, there'd be a whole lot less war going on. War's still sometimes necessary, but there'd be a whole lot less war going on. 
if we as Christians would, would love our enemies. I still think that Jesus really didn't mean that when he said that. There'd be less, less need for that. Um, and then talking about turning the other cheek and all, all those kind of things uh, that Jesus called. All those are within our grasp. And we, when a nation goes to war, and some of you have lived through that, and again, we, my, whole, uh, my whole wife's family is Air Force and Marines. We have a son that's in the Army Reserves. And so I do know that's sometimes necessary, and, and that's kind of outside of our range to, with that. But we, what is within our grasp is to live peaceably with all men. We're called to do that. And, of course, the ultimate peace will be when Jesus Christ comes back. He says, great peace have, um, he said, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Believe in God, but believe also in me. So he says, my peace I leave unto you, my peace I give unto you. And he wants us as believers to be givers of that same peace uh, to men. So in uh, everywhere we go. So we thank you for that. Thank you for your service and for the biblical instruction on war and peace. Brother Roland, we'll turn it over to you in the, from down there. And If you haven't met Brother Roland, he has a fractured fi fibula or tibia? Tibia. 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 All right. So we're, I didn't even know that coming in here, but thank you for serving through that. We look forward to the Lord using you today. Oh 
bread that shall never sell retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. take a moment right now uh, to remember those that have fought and died in service to our country and we're going to follow that by the playing of taps this morning
Let's pray. Dear Father, we love you so much. We thank you for bringing us together this morning. Lord, we look forward to what you have in store for the rest of this service. Lord, we thank you so much that, that there are people willing to sacrifice themselves in service to our country. We thank you for their families who have also sacrificed. Lord, we, we want to honor those today, Lord, as we also honor the name of Jesus. Lord, and, and that's our most important. We thank you for the sacrifice of your son as well, the ultimate sacrifice as we reflect on those that have sacrificed for the cause of our country. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much for the grace and mercy that was shown to us, even though we're yet sinners. And once again, Lord, we ask that you Continue to be with us through this service. Lord, um, we pray for everyone here, Lord. I know some are out and visiting and vacationing maybe, Lord, but uh, we pray for those as well. Touch their hearts. Let them know we love them and miss them. But, Lord, I, I pray for this service at this time, Lord, and the rest of it, whatever else you have in store for us today. Lord, I pray for Brother TC, who's going to be singing in a few moments. and. Uh, just sing through him today, Lord. I pray for our pastor, uh, that you give him whatever words that need to be spoken to us today, Lord. And I know he's going to point us all towards Jesus, Lord, because that is the message. Lord, I love you, and I thank you once again for everything. And I pray all these things in the precious name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. This time we're going to have a short video. If someone would like to uh, get the lights, please, uh, we'll show that video. And then after that, we'll have some special music. Thank you. They stood side by side, shoulder to shoulder, and answered the call. They moved forward, advancing the ideas that everyone was free, everyone was created equal, Everyone has the right to pursue their own dreams and that our nation was founded on those ideals. But not all of them came back. Some remained, never to go home, never to see their families. And some we lost this side of the field of battle. They were sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, greatly loved. They charged forward for honor and peace and freedom. We acknowledge the empty space where we want them to be. Together we pay sincere tribute to those who fought for us. Those we remember, those we love. I appreciate everybody that serves. I really do. All of our first responders, law enforcement, Memorial Day, you put it on the line every single day. And I appreciate it myself. And I know we as a community do as well. He was a troubled kid in and out of jail Till his daddy said this is the last time I paid bail so he enlisted in the army and they sent him to Iraq. He was a different man when he came back. Somebody said the army must have whipped you into shape. 
He said that's not the reason that I changed Somebody died for me Before I even asked for help Gave their life for me When I couldn't save myself I cannot live the way I live Or be the way I was Every day's a gift to me Because Somebody died for me Then they fold the flag and attach a silver star As the grieving widow leans against his arms Then he stands before the family And somehow tries to tell How he survived the day his best friend fell no one who ever knew him was surprised he died that way. He always lived for Jesus, and he always used to say, Somebody died for me before I even asked for help, gave their life for me when I couldn't save myself. I cannot live the way I live or be the way I was. Every day is a gift to me because somebody died for me. And I don't want to waste the moment of the time that I have left. With every breath I'm given, God help me not forget. God help me not forget. Somebody died for me before I even asked for help. Gave their life for me when I couldn't save myself. I cannot live the way I live or be. Way I was every day is a gift to me because somebody died for me. Thank you, Jesus, for taking my sins upon the cross. And thank you, God, for a group of men and women that will put it on the line to keep all of us free. Amen. Thank you, Brother T.C. Please turn the Bible with me to Luke chapter 4. Uh, Luke chapter 4. This morning we're looking at freedom. And I want to encourage you, if you have not already, to stop in the foyer following our worship this morning and look at the displays that we have uh, out there. Freedom. The quest for freedom is thousands of years old, is it not? Um, the quest for freedom goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 3. In Genesis chapter 3 is when humanity rebelled against God. Adam and Eve could walk with God, uh, innocent, walking in the cool of the day, talking with God, God talking with them. But in Genesis chapter 3, humanity rebelled against God and lost their freedom. We lost our freedom when we rebelled against God in sin. And 
the long-term effects of this rebellion is both physical and spiritual. We see it played out over and over, even in the, in the Old Testament. We just went through a Sunday mornings in the book of Joshua, how the Israelites, they were enslaved in Egypt, and God did great miracles and delivered them out of slavery in Egypt and led them. It took them a while because of rebellion, but they made it into the promised land. And then the Israelites, because of disobedience of God, that nation again was placed under captivity and was led off to Babylon because of sin. And we see it in world history how humanity, the long-term effects physically and spiritually of losing our freedom and trying to gain freedom back. Even today, so many are living in the long-term effects of slavery and sin. So freedom, it's, the quest for it is thousands of years old. I want to draw your attention now to our text in Luke chapter 4. We certainly know that freedom is not free. That's one thing that Memorial Day reminds us as Americans, that the freedom that we have is certainly not free. It costs. It costs the sweat and blood of those before us that fought for freedom. But freedom is only found in Jesus Christ, this type of freedom that Adam and Eve enjoyed in the garden. And it was lost because of sin. That freedom can be gained back in Christ Jesus and in Christ Jesus alone. Uh, Luke chapter 4, look in verse 18. Jesus is speaking now. Uh, he's reading from the book of Isaiah, uh, the uh, passage that speaks about the Messiah. And he only reads the first part of the passage. The rest of the passage in Isaiah is talking about the second return of the Messiah when he comes back in judges and righteousness. But he reads the first part of it, so let's read verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has appointed, anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So our text today is, is speaking how the Messiah uh, comes to set people free. Look again. Let's look what sin does. What sin does first. The damage of sin. Look again with me. In verse 18, the latter part, the Messiah, the Lord, he has come to preach the gospel, the good news, to the poor. So what does sin do? Sin impoverishes people, enslaves them. But Christ, the Messiah, brings the good news of salvation to them. Also, uh, what does sin do? 
For the Messiah comes to heal the brokenhearted, so sin breaks hearts. Broken hearts is mostly over sin and what sin has done to someone else or to themselves. Also, the Messiah comes to proclaim liberty to the captives. So liberty, sin, the opposite, sin, enslaves people. And so sin enslaves, but the Messiah comes to proclaim liberty. Also look, it says, to re and recovery of sight to the blind. So sin blinds people, but the Messiah brings them uh, sight again, spiritual sight. Also, the Messiah has come to set at liberty those who are oppressed. So sin oppresses people and enslaves them. And, uh, it, it's sin... Uh, oppresses its victims but Jesus has come to bring liberty and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord verse 19 and this refers to a jubilee in the Old Testament and what happens with jubilee um, slaves are set free and um, <clears throat> I, I'm sorry but would y'all please turn these off if you can because all I can hear is uh, ringing uh, in my ears. Okay, let's get back to the acceptable year of the Lord. Um, it refers to Jubilee in the Old Testament. Slaves are set free and debts are, are, are paid in full. And, and in other words, it's a new start. Everyone grasps that. Let me have your attention. Jesus has come to proclaim a new start for anyone who will receive him. He will set us free from sin. He will set you free from sin. He will liberate you from sin. And not only will he liberate us from sin, uh, he, Jesus liberates us from death, from sin and anything everyone listen he will liberate you from anything that enslaves you anything that holds you captive not only spiritually but physically but what is this freedom? Before we get into that, you may be asking, well, what, what are you talking about? What is isn't a good example of this freedom? And one of the best examples that I can think of is one of my favorite stories in the Scripture. Paul and Silas in the book of Acts is placed in prison. They were whipped and placed in the innermost part of the prison in there where the worst of the worst are in prison. In stocks, they're, in, they're placed in there, whipped, bloody, beaten. And the Bible says that at midnight, they started singing praises to the Lord. They were chained up, beaten, placed in prison, but yet they were free. They were free men. That, that's the best example of the freedom Christ has for us. I cannot stand here and proclaim to you that Christ can keep you from imprisonment. That's not the type of freedom I'm talking about because you know what? It is just a matter of a generation that we in America can be placed in prison. Just a generation away, if that now. 
But they were arrested for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, placed in prison, and yet they were as free as a man could be because they were free in Christ. That's the freedom Christ offers. In other countries today, people are in prison for the gospel. We're not yet in America. Maybe the church is so apostate that it doesn't matter what we think in America. I don't know, but it, we're close. We're close. But they were free. Paul and Silas, they were free. And Jesus liberates us from death. How? Well, Resurrection Day, while we worship on Sunday, the Lord's Day, He conquered the grave. And our physical bodies may die, but yet Job said, In my flesh I will see my Redeemer. He delivers us from death. We have eternal life in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the gospel liberates folks. If we don't have the gospel that saves us, and it's the gospel that changes our lives, it's the gospel that wants us to live and follow Jesus. If we can't preach the gospel and live the gospel, we have no hope of any liberation, of any freedom. So it's the gospel of Jesus Christ that rescues us, even from sin, anything that enslaves us, entangles us, besets us from running the race and following Christ, keeping our eyes on Him, anything just like as a nation of Israel, they would follow the Lord and fall in sin. And then God would discipline them. And, and then they'd follow the Lord again. And then they'd fall in sin again. And, and folks, can we not be the same way? Even a child of God anything that enslaves us, that's why we are to lay aside any sin or weight that besets us. Things that enslave us like greed, vanity, pride, pornography, addiction, abusive behavior, gluttony, selfishness, and may I say, like the Apostle Paul and the like, <laughs> things of the flesh, things that enslaves us. Look with me in John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Jesus says this. John chapter 8, verse 34. John chapter 8, verse 34. Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. So Christ, being in Christ, following Christ, He sets us free. Living for Christ. It's freedom from sin. It's, it's freedom. But let me say this. Again, I confess to you, I don't know everything about the sovereignty of God. I do not know everything about the free will of man. But I do know some way or another they too come together. And we have a choice. I do know that. We have a choice 
You have the free will to choose what you will do. God knows everything. Yes, amen, hallelujah, I know he does. But also know, like in the book of Romans, we have a free will. We have a choice. You can choose. You can choose to accept or reject the, the freedom that God offers in Christ. You can be set free from sin initially by trusting in Christ and salvation and have eternal life. And as a child of God, you choose daily whether you will yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, whether you will yield yourself to the obedience of Scripture or walk in rebellion. Remember, God will discipline as a good father. He will discipline a nation. But we have a choice. And as we remember all that, all the ones who have died, served our country in various wars, the ones who gave their lives for our freedom, as we remember that, let us also remember that Christ died for our sins. God came in the flesh so that we can have fellowship with him again and walk in freedom. And you have a freedom to choose. I want to ask you to bow your heads. Would you please bow your heads? As a child of God, as a born-again believer, please remember what Christ has done for you. Where would you be today if it was not for Christ? Where would you be? Do you neglect the freedom you have in Christ? And this freedom is actually enslaving yourself into Christ to live for Him. You have a choice. As a child of God, are you enslaved? Have you placed yourself back under bondage? The Apostle Paul said, O Galatians, who has bewitched you that you would place yourself back under a man-made tradition or law when Christ has set you free? Want to ask the one that's ensnared right now, whatever has you enslaved and snared and, and it's besetting you, will you turn that over to Christ? Will you give it to Him? And I'm also asking anyone that does not know Jesus personally, You can know him now. Right at this very moment, you can confess your sin before the Lord. Confess that you are a sinner. And believe that he died on the cross for your sin. You can ask forgiveness of your sin from him and ask him to be the Lord of your life 
so that you can walk in fellowship and relationship with him. Walk in freedom. Let us pray. Lord, in the solemnness of this moment, Lord, as a child of God, any child of God in here knows that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And Lord, when we come to you, it's like a great burden is lifted off of us. And Lord, it's like we're free and we are in you. But it's so easy, so easy to fall back to place ourselves back under bondage and captivity. God, I, I pray for my brothers and sisters, Lord, that they will turn, let go, and return to you. God, for those who need to know you personally, need to respond in faith, may your Holy Spirit touch them, and may they be set free by our Lord Jesus Christ. And I ask this in his name. Amen. Would you please stand? I'm here to help you in any way. Brother Roland, would you lead us in a song? I'd like to thank Ethan for setting this up. He's in the back over there. Thank you, uh, Ethan, for setting this up for us. Uh, just a little bit about it. Can I let everybody sit? Well, I... 
Oh, okay. <laughs> I ain't going to preach. <laughs> uh, just a little bit about it. The, the, speaker up, <laughs> the speaker up there is what uh, we would actually be purchasing. So we wanted you to hear you know, what it would sound like with the, with the speaker that we were proposing. Um, the monitors up here are similar to what we would be getting, but not exactly. Uh, they're they're going to be a lot smaller, so uh, we would have three of them up here, two dedicated for the choir, one dedicated for the person uh, at the pulpit. And uh, just I, I hope you uh, enjoyed it today, and, and hopefully you could tell uh, quite a bit of difference uh, in what we're proposing. And, and also there's a new board up there um, to uh, for our, our uh, sound crew uh, to work, but I'm uh, just hoping that everybody noticed the uh, quite a, a, a difference between everything and uh, and please uh, be in prayer about it. I know uh, it's a lot of money uh, to purchase a new sound system, so please be in prayer. Um, not only that, you know, uh, we might make the right decision, but also that uh, the Lord will provide. So, thank you. Uh, thank you, Brother Roland. And, um, we didn't practice me preaching before this morning, of course, and I'm a very peculiar person. I want to blast y'all, but not myself. <laughs> so I had to ask to turn the monitor down. But well, let's quit, okay? Let's close in prayer. And uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And again, thank you, Ethan. So let, let's close in prayer uh, this morning. Brother Candy Jane, would you close us in prayer, please? <clears throat> 